Once again, it's Prophet Tom, and we're here to look at the Word of God and to get into the deep things of God. On Tuesdays, we are opening the mysteries of God. And today, we're going to look at renewing the mind. You know, the mind is perhaps our greatest battlefields. It is something we struggle with every day, and many people fail in this area. So what does God's Word have to say? What is God opening up to us through His Word that will help us be victorious when it comes to the area of the mind? As we study the Word of God, we see numerous ex examples of even our superheroes who struggled in the area of the mind. Paul himself says in Romans chapter 7, the thing that I hate the most, I do. And he's talking about struggling in the mind, the mind overcoming. He's wanting to do the spiritual things, but the mind steps in and tries to divert him. Peter, in Matthew chapter 16, touches in the area that we're talking about today when Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said, thou art the son of the living God. And Christ said, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but the spirit of almighty God has revealed. But then we go down a few verses and Jesus begins to speak about his death and resurrection. And Peter steps in and says, you will not die. Over my death uh, will you die. And Jesus turns around and rebukes him and says, get thee behind me, Satan. And so we understand that we are struggling in the area of the mind. So what does the Word of God say? Well, in this study, we're looking at the mysteries of God and Deuteronomy 29 and verse 29. So let's read it again. It's our key text and it says this, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but these those things which are revealed belong to us. There are areas that we will not know about perhaps for years. You know, for example, uh, Psalms 139 verses 14 to 16, God says, I have a blueprint for your life. You know, if you had said to me 49 years ago when we entered the ministry that I would be standing in front of a computer and I would be preaching every day of the week on that computer, which is called Facebook, uh, I would have laughed at you. And so there are things that are not revealed until it is God's time. But back there, even before I was in my mother's womb, God knew that I'd be on Facebook in 2020. And so, and this is what we're opening up today. In the, our, our text today is found in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 we'll read from. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. It says, I urge you therefore, brethren, or brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. Therefore, brethren, I, by, I, by the mercies of God, I urge you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies. You know, the mercies of God, the forgiving source of God. What does it mean to renew our mind? And so it goes on here that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, unex uh, sorry, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. By the renewing of your mind, what is the renewing of our mind? 
the meaning for renewing uh, the mind is it is a process of shedding the old outer coverings and putting on the new. Uh, if you see a snake, a snake will uh, every season will shed its old skin and sometimes you'll be walking in uh, the forest or you know areas where there are a lot of snakes and and you will see snake skins but no snake. It's the shedding of the skin and when we become born again we must begin to shed the skin of the old man and put on the new. If we do not shed, if we live in the past, you know one of the philosophies, one of the creeds that is creeping into the church in the last 10 to 20 years is that it's okay to have the old skin on. You know, they're, they're introducing, they're accepting things that are of the world and saying it's okay to do it in the church. And well, let me tell you, it's not okay. We need to shed the coverings, the outer coverings, the outer skin. We need to shed the carnal mind. And we'll look at that here today. For it goes on to say this. Let's read on a little bit further. It says, do not be conformed to this world. See, what is this world? This world right now is in turmoil. This world right now is in the worst possible uh, state that it has been in in my lifetime, which as of tomorrow is 69 years. And so, you know, what is this world? You know, right now, right at this moment as I am speaking, China's army is marching towards India. We may wake up in the morning to a major war between the two largest population countries in the world, China and India. It's over a dispute of borders. It's over virtually nothing, all the land they own, and yet they still want more because that is the carnal mind. The carnal mind is corrupt. The carnal mind is polluted. The carnal mind is greedy. The carnal mind is full of pride. The carnal mind is full of hatred. The carnal mind is full of past hurts and rejections. The carnal mind is like a big bag that we carry around on our back of all the things that have happened in our life. I tell you, let me tell you, in 69 years, if I was to be living in the carnal and carrying around all the garbage of my life, I would not be able to carry them. I would not be here today. I would have taken my life or I would be gone from this earth. But the mercies of God, the grace of God, God sent his son Jesus Christ to come and die on Calvary so that my sins would be shed, so that my sins would be placed at his back, so that my sins would be in the sea of his forgetfulness uh, so that my sins would be gone forever and I no longer need to carry them. You know, right now, we may cover this a little later, but right now we have uh, major issues with racism. And you know, some of the areas out of racism is the hurts that are carried, uh, the, the, the way we're brought up. Uh, you know, if we're brought up to uh, distrust or to hate uh, a, a different kind of person, uh, then we will carry that garbage through in our life. Uh, but a renewed mind will reach out to those people People. I remember in the Second World War, at the end of the Second World War, and a lot of Australians that came back uh, that had been in uh, detention centers uh, that were that were controlled by the Japanese, uh, and you know, 50 years later, many of those men still had the worms of what happened in the. Oh, look, I know it was tragic. Uh, I know what they went through was painful, but didn't Christ go through more? Didn't Christ go through more? And yet Christ said on the cross, uh, after being whipped and his skin torn apart uh, and his body opened as it were, and the crown of thorns placed on his head uh, and the spear pushed into his side uh, and he lifted his eyes and the nails that went through his hands uh, and he lifted his head and he said, Father, 
forgive them for they know not what they do that that is a renewed mind that is transformation the difference between the carnal and transformation the carnal wants self the carnal wants more it doesn't matter who's dying of starvation it doesn't matter who's uh, struggling i i'm looking at me i'm concerned about me what have you got for me that's the carnal that's the carnal but the transformed mind the renewed mind will not look at their own inabilities i remember hearing a story i think it was it was a church in america can't remember the church uh, but there was this lady in the church that had been sick most of her life uh, and yet she was involved 100 percent in the church uh, she was in a wheelchair involved in the church work uh, and doing what she can even if it was just ringing people up uh, and then one day she took a turn for the worst uh, and they had to put her in hospital with the possibility of a never coming out of hospital uh, and she rang the church office uh, and she said uh, give me names of people who I can email because I'm here in this bed in hospital I cannot walk uh, I cannot spend a lot of time on the phone uh, but I can still email I can still ring people to encourage them I can still ring people and tell them God loves them I can still ring people and lift them up and exalt them here was a woman that had weeks to live uh, and was having breathing problems uh, and you know the body was shutting down uh, but her mind was renewed her mind was renewed let's continue to read on do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of the mind uh, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God that you may prove what is perfect what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God you see the world knows no other way we are the living examples we are as it were Christ here on this earth because Christ lives in us how are we living you know if we hit our, our, our finger with the hammer do we curse and swear or do we praise God uh, when we're in, uh, in in blockage traffic do we get impatient and start yelling out and start abusing people when we're in shopping centers and there's long lineup especially in this coronavirus time what is our reaction because the world is looking at us are we showing what is good what is acceptable and what is the perfect will of God I know it's hard I know it's difficult to change every day we get up and the mind attacks especially like right now people have lost their jobs and you know I heard the other day that nearly two thousand Australians look like losing their homes their mortgage is getting out of control they had to make a decision in this season uh, would they eat or would they pay their payments uh, and you know it's difficult in times like that knowing that you've invested your life into a house uh, but let me say that is the problem you see we're not to invest our how our life uh, into earthly things because our houses will be taken away from us look at the you know the the middle east now with these refugees fleeing from their countries they've left their houses they've left their families you know in our church that i fellowship in we have many from syria and these places that have had to flee from those countries they've left family they've left their houses some of them had nice houses but they've had to flee and leave those houses behind their investment of life uh, is back there they're here with nothing uh, you know that our church sometimes feeds them especially in this coronavirus taking hampers around to them you know helping them to speak English we have English classes that we're running at the church uh, and so forth and so on uh, but you know they had to leave everything one day we may do the same 
houses just for a moment you can't take it to glory with you your car is just for a moment you can't take it to glory with you your bank account is just for a moment you can't take it with you but what you can take uh, is a renewed mind uh, what you can take uh, is the gems uh, and the and the the special things that God has in his word that become part of you that when people look at you someone said when you die what do you want written on your tombstone on. Well, that's a question to each of us. Uh, when Tom James, what does he want written on his gemstone? Can it be like Paul? I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I am ready. Or will it be, well, look, I have all this. One man said uh, to God in a joke, of course, uh, that he said to God, his time had come. And he said, God, you're unfair. And he said, God said to him, well, what do you mean? He said, well, you expect us to go with, go to heaven and to take nothing with us. And so God said, well, what would you like to take? Uh, you can take anything you want so long as it fits in one bag. Uh, so the man got all of his wealth together and had it turned into gold. Uh, and he placed all the gold in his bag. Uh, and then the time came and he went to heaven and he met Peter at the pearly gates. Uh, and... Uh, and Peter said, uh, what's your name? And he told him and Peter said, well, yes, you're here. You can come in, but you can't take that bag with you. And the man said, well, God said I can. I negotiated this with God and God said I could. So Peter said, okay. So he went on into the pearly gates and as he walked through the pearly gates, all that he could see in glory was gold. His gold here on earth meant nothing in heaven our possessions here on earth, our carnal possessions here on earth mean nothing in glory. What are we going to say when we stand before God Almighty? Well, God, you know, I know you called me to China. Well, God, I know you called me to Vietnam. Well, God, I know you called me to the d jungles of Africa. But I had work. I had family commitments. I had this. They won't stand up. When God calls, we need to obey. When God calls, we need to say, here am I. Send me like Isaiah said. So let's read on. Verse 3, for I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sound judgment, according to the measure of faith, God has distributed to every man. You see, one time Christ sent the disciples out. He said, go out in twos, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons. And they went out and they came back and they were so excited so overjoyed you know I, I i cast out a hundred demons peter only cast out 70 demons uh, i did this i did that and then a little while later christ heard him talking he was away but he came and he knew what they were talking about and he come and approached them and they were talking about who was the greater one you see here it says don't be puffed up don't be puffed up. Outside of God, we are nothing. It is the changing power of God that transforms us. Let us read on. We don't have time to labor on a lot of these verses. Verse 4. For just as we have... many parts in one body, and not all parts have the same function... So we being many are one body in Christ. No one is greater. We're all the same. We're all the same. No one is greater. We need to remember that. Let's go over to Colossians. And Colossians chapter 3. And it says this. A powerful, powerful chapter on the renewing of the mind. It says, if then. What's that mean? Go back to the next chapter. We don't have time to do it. You can do that in your private time. But go back to the next chapter. If then you were raised with Christ. Are we raised? Are we born again? Are we a new creation? 
Are we, have we moved from the carnal nature to the spiritual nature? Have we become spirit beings? Then if so, God has a word for us here. If then you were raised with Christ, seek the things of this world. No, it doesn't say that. It says, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. You see, it's a change. It's a change of approach. It's a change of direction. It's a change of attitude. You know, no longer am I worried about being the, 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 the Prime Minister of Australia. No longer am I worried about being the most successful man in the company. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do those things. If that's the anointing of God on your life, if that's the calling of God on your life, pursue it. But above all those things, seek, seek, seek those things that are above. So it says, Seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Listen to verse 2. Set the mind. Set the mind. Say it. Set the mind. Set the mind. Set the mind. I'm sorry I'm laboring, but we need to understand it. Set the minds on things above, not on things of the earth. You know, every morning I wake up and I get into the Word of God. I've shared this with you in the last 18 months. I've read the Bible through five times. Um, and now I began a five to six minute devotion, which I've called opening the Word of God every morning. Starting your day off in the Word of God. Are you starting your day off? Or do you wake up and you're tired and you got to have your shower and you got to have your breakfast and then your time's gone and you go out in the world in the flesh? You see, that's how we fail, church. That's how we fail. It's hard. But we've got to have the attitude of Jacob. Remember, Jacob had the vision and God came down and he, and he wrestled with God. And he wrestled with God. And he wrestled with God. And it went on for hour after hour after hour after hour after hour. Until it reached the point that the sun began to appear the next morning. So they wrestled all night. And God said, let me go. And he said, I will not let you go. Until you have transformed me. And he said, until I, you bless me. But he transformed him. He changed his name from Jacob's supplanter to Israel. Praise. His life was transformed. You know, if you're struggling in your mind, you need to wrestle with God. If you're struggling in your mind, you need to get down and begin to fight with God. Say, I will not go. I will not go. If you're sick in your body right now and you're struggling through all of this uh, with the sickness and everything else, you need to get down and have an encounter with God and say, I will not get up until you bless me, until you transform me, until you change me. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of this earth. For you died and your life is hid with Christ in God. See, we're no longer alive, church. Isn't that exciting? Tom James is dead. No one can hurt me. No one can harm me. You know, I get into a plane to fly over to Africa or India and under my breath, I say to the people sitting next to me, I say, you people don't know how lucky you are that I'm on this plane because nothing can happen to this plane because I'm the son of the almighty God 
I'm in line to the throne. I'm a prince of Almighty God. Hallelujah. You see, this has got to be our attitude. Christ hung on that Christ. Or Christ was taken into captivity. He could have called a legion of armies. Uh, he could have said, God, send down your angels uh, and destroy all these people because God had done it. Remember with El Elisha and uh, the army encamped around about his house and the servant got up in the morning and he looked in the flesh and all that he saw was the army of the enemy and Elisha came over and Elisha said, God opened his eyes and suddenly the servant could see the vast army of God and just Elijah, just one man, took a vast army into captivity, took him into Samaria and fed him and then sent him home. Christ could have done that, but he knew that his hour had come. He said in the garden of Gethsemane, sweating like it were drops of blood, in great agony, he said, Father, if you can, let this pass by, but not my will but thine be done. You see, that is a renewed heart. God says, Tom, give up everything and do this. Oh, Father, if you can go, get, you know, is there a second option, God? Can I, can I do this? You know, can I, can I build this up first? Can I? No. Tom. And Tom says, not my will, Father, but your will be done. Your will be done. Your will be done when Christ who is our life when Christ who is our life appears then you will also appear with him in glory isn't that a greater reward than living in the carnality of our life isn't that a greater reward than having all the earthly possessions but one day standing with Christ in all of his glory verse 5 therefore Put to death your members which are on this earth. Put to get death the things of the flesh. You know, allow God to work as he worked in Peter's life. You know, let's go back to, to Genesis, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Matthew chapter 16. Uh, and here is Peter and Jesus says to Peter, Peter, God has revealed these things. Blessed are you. And then he goes down and he says, we're going to give you the keys. You're going to be a powerhouse in the church that I'm going to establish. And yet even when Christ said all of those things to him, he looked at Peter and didn't, and he knew in his spirit that Peter would fail him many times because a work had to be done. He had to shed the skin he had to shed the old man you know standing before those little girls and cursing god saying he wasn't a follower of jesus but then just a few days later now renewed now transformed now a new man full of the holy ghost he stands up and three thousand people are saved it says put to death your members which are on this earth. What, what, what have we got to put to death? Put to death fornication. You know, pornographic on the computer is a major problem with Christians today. Put it to death. Past hurts are a major problem with Christians today. You don't understand me, Pastor. You don't know my background. You don't know the circumstances. Put to death the things of this earth. Fornication, uncleansiness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry because of these things the wrath of God is coming upon the sons. Let me go back. Let's turn to, to Romans chapter 8 very quickly. Romans chapter 8, a, a powerful chapter. I've written a whole book on this chapter. Romans chapter 8, uh, and it says this, verse 5, Those things, that for those 
who live according to their flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. You see, if we're living for this world, that's where our spirit is. That's where our heart is. It's not towards God. And that's why, you know, many Christians today only go to church once a month. I suppose they're very fortunate at the moment that they can stay home and watch it on TV. Perhaps they go every week there. But, you know, the sad reality is that their concept of church is once a month will get me to heaven. And so many only go once a month, uh, statistics tell us. So it says, uh, uh, chapter 8, verse 5, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit are the things of the Spirit. What revelation has God shown you this week? Write it down. Share it with me. Many of you are on. I can see over there. I don't like looking while I'm preaching because I want you to focus on my eyes and the words uh, that I'm saying. But, uh, you know, those of you that are there that are writing, write down any revelation God has given you this week. Write it down. We are told by uh, Habakkuk to put it in writing. Write our visions down. What, what's your vision? What is the vision God has given you? Share it. Share it with us so we can pray with you. Write it down. Write it down. And so we go on. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Now listen, verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. Wow. Wow. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In the midst of the coronavirus, we can have life and peace. In the midst of the racist upheaval, we can have life and peace. In the midst of threatening war, we can have life and peace. In the midst of the economy collapsing, we can have life and peace. That is a renewed mind. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is at war against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it. So then those who are of the flesh cannot please, excuse me, cannot please God. What tragedy? What tragedy? thousands if not millions are at war with God oh man I'd hate to have that reality I'd hate to wake up one morning and think Tom James you're at war with God I hate that church we've got to turn that around and the way we turn it around it says later in that chapter it says those that are led by the spirit those who have become spirit beings are sons of God. Powerful. And we'll look at that one another later on. Let's go back to Romans chapter 3. And verse 6 says, Because of these things, which things? What we just read. Because of the fleshly things, fornication, uncleansiness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourself once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourself are to put off these things, put off anger, put off wrath, Put off malice. Put off filthy language. Uh, and, uh, put off uh, uh, blaspheming. Do not lie to one another. Since you have put off the old man with his deeds. But having put on the new man. who Listen, I like this. Who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created us. You know, Christ said... It's to your advantage, and we're going to start closing. We'll pick this up next week. Christ said, it's to your advantage that I go away, for then I can send the Holy Spirit who will come. He will convict, and but he also will reveal 
all things about Christ to us. You see, it's the Holy Spirit who renews us. It's the Holy Spirit who cleanses us. It's the Holy Spirit who brings us in to become a spirit being. Let me read verse 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercy, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. You know, you need to wake up tomorrow morning and get on your phone or even today, because some of you, your day's just beginning. You need to get on the phone, ring one of your friends up and begin to sing on the phone to them. I'm sure that would be alarm, especially if you sing like me, but begin to sing to them. Sing a spiritual song. And when they say, what's up with you? Have you lost your head? Say, no, I'm just doing what the word of God says. The word of God tells me to sing a song to you. And the last verse we'll share today is Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26. It says, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. We'll pick that up next week because, you know, when this racism thing that's happened, there's a lot of issues that we Christians need to look at, even in that area. How is your reaction? You know, I was uh, even convicted uh, this week uh, as I heard a powerful message uh, by T.D. Jakes uh, on uh, racism. And it really challenged me to the core as well. And so next week we'll pick up our renewing our mind at that point. This is Prophet Tom. What a joy it has been with you. I've been excited to share this word. Share it with your friends. And don't forget to write down in the side some of the blessings, some of the visions, some of the words that God has given to you this week. If you're free tomorrow morning, join in with me every morning, Australian time at least, around six o'clock. Uh, um, I open the day with starting your day in the Word of God. Oh, what a joy. Bless you. Prophet Tom saying I love you. Have a great day in God.